I just found out five minutes ago that my agent has dropped me, which means that they will no longer be representing me. Now, for those of you who don't know how agents, actors work, you do not pay your agent. Your agent only gets paid if you make money. It's a partnership basically that you both decide to enter into uh, in order that they submit you for projects that you can't otherwise submit yourself for. Just basically bigger films. And in return, you give them good auditions and hopefully book something so that way they make money. I got my first agent when I was 15. I went through a lot of bad agents before in 2019 I finally came across this agent that I really liked. Uh, she had a smaller agency which is good because it means that you know you're not just one of 50 people that look just like you in the agency. You know you have a little bit more of a personal connection with the agent and a little more attention in that sense versus being part of like a giant agency. I really liked her. I really like her personality and I have no hard feelings towards her. Um, I understand changes have to happen, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. It also sucks because we signed in 2019 and then all of 2020 was basically null and void anyway. And yes, we've had a lot of 2021, but it feels like, like we were even having a conversation a couple months ago, there just has not been a lot of opportunities for my type right now. And, and by type, I mean, you know, uh, casting breakdowns come in certain types. I'm typically going to audition for later high school, college girls, um, girl next door, quirky best friend. There are certain types, obviously, that when casting directors look at me just aren't quite as believable. I've been thinking a lot in 2021. I took six months off of acting classes. I was actually surprised I didn't get dropped sooner, given I was taking a break. <laughs> um, and I don't regret taking that break. I had been training nonstop for seven years. Let's go back a second. I first decided I wanted to become an actor when I was seven years old. I figured if I could devote my life to learning about one thing, I could be like the people who go to the Olympics, the people who work so hard in one area and that they can perfect it and become great at it. Unfortunately, I chose art. And I don't regret it because I love it. But there's very little control when it comes to being an actor. You could be the greatest actor of this generation and no one will ever know it. Because so much of acting comes down to luck, networking, timing, cultural times affect views on certain types, certain stories that are told, um, timing, who you know what kind of family you were born into, all of these affect this. But I figured, even though I wasn't born into a family of actors, and even though nothing, I had no leg up whatsoever in acting, that I was still going to do it. Because if I could work hard enough and long enough, eventually it would work out. You know, it's interesting, and I could be wrong. I think about Brie Larson's speech when she got her Oscar at 28 is crazy because I'm 26 <laughs> where she was like so adamant about how like it took 20 years to get here and I've been acting since I was seven so it's almost been 20 years for me but I've never even been a one-liner on a feature film or even that one character who says something on a tv show I've only ever done the small indie stuff in the short films and I was really hurt when my LA agent who dropped me a couple weeks ago which means that I'm now agentless I had two agents both have dropped me. I was a little hurt when they decided to label all their clients and one of the things they did was they labeled like all their actors the top people like with the best credits being mature trees and like the baby like people at the bottom being like I think it was baby tree or like baby sapling or whatever and I got put into that category. And I remember getting on the phone with them like I'm a baby tree. <laughs> I genuinely was kind of hurt about that because it's like I don't know. I don't really see the use in labeling. And if you are, like, what's the point in telling the actors? I don't... Like, what is the point in telling the actors other than to be hurtful? I honestly believe that my LA agents were incredibly kind people uh, and that had all the best intentions. Just maybe sometimes the execution not so good. Um, or maybe my communication just doesn't line up with their type. I was always told growing up, being an actor is really hard. Odds are you're not going to make it. But I always had the drive and the optimism. And that's where at the beginning of this year, I already made a video. You can go back and watch that. And I've decided to still not give up. Just interesting looking at it as an adult now.
seeing how little control you have over it. And even if you do make it, how little control you have because not your script, not your movie. Not only are the words not yours, but then the way you say them really comes up to the director. You know, there have been films I've been in where I felt like I was acting genuinely and then a director pushed me into like more of like a cheesy style of acting that I didn't feel authentic in and I feel like it really showed in the end product. And like, you know, so a director also can have control over your acting and they should, they're the director. But as an actor... There's just so little control. And I still love it. My favorite thing is when someone calls action and I get to just do my thing. And my least favorite part is when they say cut and then you have to wait for them to move the camera or blah, 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 or whatever. I like the acting part. The older I get, the more I want to create my own. And that's why 2022, I'm going to be focusing more on music. And I'm going to make a different video on that. So I won't go into that right now. Over the last... 19 years that I've been pursuing acting. I have learned so much. I've probably spent multiples of tens of thousands of dollars between traveling to auditions, paying for headshots, uh, paying to have, you know, self-taping service, paying for coaching, acting classes, special workshops. Being an actor means to start your own business. It's, it's not even starting your own business. It's like inventing your own product. It's like when I watched the movie Joy and she invented, you know, the miracle mop. You know, she had to <laughs> do second mortgage on her house, like all this stuff where she spent so much money and you're never guaranteed to make that back. You're never guaranteed that people are going to like the product. And here's the other thing about acting. You're entering an industry that like, let's say, let's say you were an inventor. You decided to invent a new product, but you brought a product that we already have and we already have so many options of, you would be laughed at. But that's what we do in the acting industry every day. It is so oversaturated with the same thing, like the same type person. And that's why it's so hard to make it because you've got to have something different, something special, that that it thing or whatever in order to stand out amongst all the other options. And I'm not I'm not saying this to be like, stop it, don't pursue it. This sucks. Like, you know, I'm still going to do it. But I'm just saying. Realistically. It's hard. And, you know. My seven-year-old mind hates to admit it, but I'm probably not going to make a career out of it if you're basing it on statistics alone. But just because that's true doesn't mean I'm going to stop. <laughs> and maybe that makes me insane. <laughs> but when you love something so much that the pain of not pursuing it anymore is greater than the pain of pursuing it and having it never happen, if that makes sense, then you do it anyway. <laughs> because you love it. And because auditions are fun. They're an opportunity to do what you love. And sometimes it sucks because you spend all this time preparing an, an, on an audition and, and you work really hard and, and you never see the pay for that. Like you study something. It'd be like, you know... And some people do this. It'd be like going to school, to college for like 15 years, becoming an expert in something to like never make money off of it. <laughs> Welcome to the entertainment industry. And in the meantime, I'm going to pursue more art where I get a say. Where I make my own opportunities. I don't think I'll ever not make my own. Between directing my own short films making my music, or just making silly YouTube videos that nobody cares about but me. <laughs> and even though I have no agent <laughs> now, and I have no one submitting me for movies, I'm going to get back out there. It's like, it's like dating. <laughs> I'm going to find someone new, even though I just got broken up with. <laughs> I'm going to rebound. <laughs> get that rebound agent. <laughs> and you know, I don't think you become an actor. I think you just are. There are types of people that just are performers. And it's okay to be a performer and not make money off of it. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and New Year. Bye.